Hi. In this video, we'll be talking about comparing the relative magnitudes of objects. It seems easy for numbers. Everyone knows that 5 is greater than 3. But what about strings, lists, dictionaries, or other data types? What about nested lists or tuples? Let's have a look at how they compare. First, let's create a function that compares two objects. We can call it compare. There are two parameters, object1 and object2, which are supposed to be compared. And now, these objects are compared. If they are equal, we get a message that object1 is equal to object2. If object1 is greater than object2, we get the following message, object1 is greater than object2. So, these messages are very readable. We're not using an else statement here, but instead an explicit elif statement to test whether object1 is less than object2. Otherwise, we would get wrong results, for example, when comparing sets. And now let's see how the built-in types compare. For example, numbers. Numbers of the same type. So compare 3 and 7. As you can see, the message is very readable. 3 is less than 7. Now let's compare numbers of different types, like for example a float and an integer. Compare 5.41 and 5. And the result is correct. So as you can see, we can compare flows with integers. If so, they are first converted to the common highest type, which in this case is a float. So these two numbers are converted to floats. Actually, this one is because this one already is a float and then they are compared. But what about complex numbers? Have a look at this. Compare the complex number 4 plus 3j and an integer like 5. Well, these two objects can be compared. Yeah, this is true because we can't compare complex numbers with integers unless the imaginary part is equal to 0. So let's compare the complex number 5 plus 0j. So as you can see, the imaginary part is equal to 0 and an integer 5. This time, they can be compared. And what we get is this message telling us that these two numbers are equal. How about strings? Let's compare two simple strings that consist of just one character. Like, for example, s and t. So it turns out that s is less than t because it's earlier in the alphabet. Well, actually, strings are compared by the code point values returned by the ORT function. So the order is digits, capital letters, small letters. So let's compare two characters, which are actually the same, but one is a capital W and the other is a small w. And it turns out that capital W is less than small w because the code point returned by the ORT function is less. And now let's compare longer strings, like for example car and cat. Car is less than cat because characters are compared from left to right. So these two characters are the same. And then R is compared with T, and R is less than T. Hence this result. Now let's compare Boolean values. So, compare true and false. True is greater than false. This is because true is actually 1 and false is 0. So these are treated just like regular integers. We can also compare complex types, like for example lists. Let's compare two lists. Compare. Our first list contains the following numbers. 1, 2, 3. And the other list contains 1, 2, 4. Elements are compared from left to right, just like in strings. And these two are the same again. 
and then 3 and 4 are compared, as 3 is less than 4, the whole list is less than this one. It also works for tuples, of course. So if we change these lists to tuples, we'll get just the same result. Okay, let's see, yeah, fine. How about comparing dictionaries? Let's compare the following two dictionaries. A, 5, B, 7, and the other dictionary, B, 7, A, 5. Well, at first glance they look different, but are they? They are equal. And this is because dictionaries are equal if they contain the same key value pairs. And the order doesn't matter. So A5, A5, B7, B7. So the elements, the key value pairs are the same. And the order is not important here. Now let's modify our two dictionaries like so. A, 5, B, 7, and now B, 4, and A, 5. This time, these two objects can be compared. This is because greater than and less than don't work for dictionaries. They can be equal, like here, but one dictionary cannot be greater than or less than another dictionary. How about sets? Let's compare two sets. So the first set contains the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8. The other set contains the numbers 6, 2, 8, 4. So actually, these are the same numbers in different order. And as it turns out, they are equal. So, sets are equal if they contain the same elements in any order. Now, let's compare two other sets. Compare the first set is 2, 4, 6, 8. And the other set is 4, 8. Now, this time, this set is greater than this set. A set is greater if it's a superset. And this is a superset of this set, which means it contains all the elements of this set plus something more. Let's compare the following sets. Compare Eight four, and the other set. Eight two six four. So this set is less than this set. And again, a set is less if it's a subset of the other set. So this is a subset of this set. because it contains just some of the elements of this set. And it doesn't contain any elements that do not belong to this set. Now let's try to compare a list and a tuple which contain the same elements. Compare, here we have our list with 2 and 3, and here we have our tuple with 2 and 3. And here's the message we get. These two objects can be compared. So non-numeric mixed types can't be compared. As I mentioned before, sequences are compared from left to right.
but this works only if the elements at the same positions in the two sequences can be compared. If they can't, then the sequences can't be compared. For example, here we have two lists and we want to compare them. Compare the first list contains two numbers, one and two, and the other list contains just one string, S. These two objects can be compared. They can be compared because at position zero, we have an integer in the first list and a string in the other, and these two types can be compared. And how about nested objects? Well, they are recursively compared from left to right. Here's an example. Here we have a list, list 1, which contains the following elements. 4, 6, 2, then a sublist containing 3 and 7, and then another integer. Then we have another list, list 2, which contains the following elements. 4, 6, 2, then a sublist containing 3 and 5. And one more element here. And now let's compare the two lists. List 1 and list 2. Turns out this list is greater than this list. And here's how it works. So the elements are compared one by one. First we have 4 in the first list and in the second list. So we're moving on to the next element. Then we have 6, 6. Then we have 2, 2. And then we have a sublist. So now we are comparing recursively the elements in the sublist. First we have 3 and 3. These are equal. Then we have 7 and 5. And here we have a difference. 7 is greater than 5. So the whole sublist in the first list is greater than the sublist in the second list. And this also means that the whole list is greater than the second list. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.